Uh, to the press. We're going to have some of the press go in and sit because they're crowded, and we're the ones that were complaining about their crowding. All right, that's President Trump talking about the migrant detention center in Clint, Texas, amid continuing reports of unsanitary conditions and overcrowding. Joining us now to discuss what the situation is there is Aaron Hall. He's the chief patrol agent of U.S. Border Patrol's El Paso sector, which includes the Clint, Texas facility. Mr. Hall, thank you so much for being here to help us understand just what is going on inside there. Because, you know, there was this big New York Times cover story um, this past weekend, which once again described the horrendous conditions that these children have to endure and the, what the Border Patrol agents themselves are enduring and the trauma that it's inflicting on them. I'll just read you a portion of it. It said, outbreaks of scabies, shingles, and chickenpox were spreading among the hundreds of children who were being held in cramped cells, agents said. The stench of the children's dirty clothing was so strong it spread to the agent's own clothing. So, Mr. Hull, what, what is the situation today, and were you aware of how bad it had gotten in there? Well, I would dispute that the conditions are so bad um, as um, have been reported. I can't um, understand why some people would be making some of the allegations that they're making. I can tell you that the Clint facility is inspected constantly. The CBP chief accountability officer under the Flores Settlement Agreement was just here again last week. Um, I actually communicated with them this weekend. Yeah. Uh, this facility is inspected continuously. Yes, just to address I know a couple it, of things just, just you raised. Just one second, Mr. Hall. Hold on one second, because I know it's inspected continuously. And what they found is, yeah. uh, I mean, from the New York Times, no yeah. evidence of misconduct, but evidence of horrendous conditions. We can see it with our own eyes. I mean, the picture that we have on the split screen up with you are the overcrowded conditions. We can see the horrendous conditions that they're all sleeping in. Well, we've been talking about overcrowded conditions for some time. That's no secret. Everyone from us up through the president has talked about that. Um, that it continues to be a problem. But in terms of the, the care that they're being provided, the access to food, shower, um, hygiene, laundry, the things that we're doing, we continue to be inspected on that. We've said we're overcrowded. We've said we're going to remain overcrowded until the other entities in this chain, um, Health and Human Services and ERO, are funded in order to take these children out of our custody as soon as possible. But are you these disputing, children are processed just, just be clear, and waiting just, I just to want, be placed. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to be, make sure that I'm clear on what you're disputing. Are you saying that there were mm -hmm. not outbreaks of scabies, shingles, chicken pox? We've heard reports of lice and the flu. Are you saying that that did not happen? I'm saying the, the term outbreak is uh, not accurate. We encounter people from all over the world. When we encounter them and they get their medical screening, we often find that they have scabies, lice, chickenpox, the flu. We immediately treat those people. They're quarantined and separated. So the term outbreak implies that it's something somehow occurring or being caused in our facility. These are people that we encounter with these conditions. We address them medically, and we isolate and quarantine them from others. We have to do that in addition to all the other challenges we face. Okay. Once they leave the cell that they're in after they receive their medical treatment, then we have to clean that facility before we put other people in it. Okay, that's it. That is an important distinction. What about the bathing? I mean, what we have heard time mm -hmm. and again from the advocates who've gone in, mm -hmm. from reporters who've, who've gone in, is that the kids are not being bathed. And we've even heard the stories of the dirty diapers, the babies being in dirty diapers. So are kids getting, are children getting regular baths? Because we hear all the time that they go weeks, sometimes a month without showering. Again, you have to look at how we do things and the fact that these things are tracked. We have a detention monitor that, or module that tracks how long they're in our custody. Every two days, these children are getting um, offered shower uh, facilities. Now, we cannot make them shower. We can take them to the shower and we can put them there but we can't physically make them shower. It's the same thing with brushing their teeth. We encounter children who've never brushed their teeth. We've had a lot of agents had to teach them basic hygiene. So no, it's not true that people are being denied showers that, uh, or that these children are, are being denied access to these facilities. We make these things available. We encourage them. We brought in UAC monitors who are not agents, who are pro contract professionals to help encourage and assist children with these things. But no, these, these are not denied. These are, this is no secret that all of these aspects, food, water, hygiene, showers, laundry, we're monitored in all of this. These things are documented, and we're constantly having to I show mean, I, I how know, and why we do these so things. Confusing, and we're, Mr. And we're Hall. constantly adding more. I, I know that there's oversight uh -huh. or that, that uh, inspectors come down from Washington, 
But we just keep hearing time mm -hmm. and again how filthy the children are. I mean, surely they can shower more often than going weeks without showers. I mean, I, I, maybe a five-year-old refuses a shower, but you guys are in charge, right? Well, again, you have to understand that these children uh, are protected under the Flores Settlement Agreement. These are minors. They are not adults. Uh, they, they can't grant consent for things. They're not our own children. We have court requirements. We have laws that we have to comply with in their care and custody. Um, and, but going back to the showering and the filthy piece again, we encounter people from all over the world that are often very dirty and soiled clothing when we encounter them. At the Clint Station, for example, we keep clothes on hand for children, clean clothes on hand for children to change into. We launder their clothes and return them to them. We also have things like sweatsuits that they can wear while they're showering. All yeah. of these things are laundered and returned. You know, we can't control how they come into our custody. They're often dirty, but we make these facilities available to them and these clean clothes available to them. Yeah. And, and these children use them. In, in terms of your own responsibility, Mr. Hull, I know that you were called to Washington in January mm -hmm. um, because officials felt that you were not somehow being responsive enough to the crisis. Here's what the New York Times writes. The officials were concerned that Mr. Hull had moved too slowly to put safety measures in place after the deaths of migrant children. The officials believe that Mr. Hull and Matthew Harris, the chief of the Clint station, have been slow to follow directives and communicate developments at the facilities. Have you changed your personal... Uh, approach in any way or how you're communicating with Washington? Um, we communicate with Washington constantly. It's unfortunate. Um, if people want to criticize me, that's, they're free to do that. But it's unfortunate that statements like that would be attributed to, to the patrol agent in charge of Clint, who's gone above and beyond, continues to go above and beyond every day, has been lauded for his efforts, his continuing efforts to care for these children. And, I, and that, uh, that, that meeting that was referenced in the paper actually occurred in April, and we weren't talking about that. We're actually talking about um, the volume of people we're encountering and what we're doing to, to process those people and move them as quickly as we can. Again, I don't know why allegations like that would be made, particularly when they're inaccurate, but all we can do is tell you the truth yeah. that we see here in El Paso because we deal with it every day. Yeah, well, very, very quickly, it's that they had Border Patrol agents in the article talk to them. And at least two Border Patrol agents at the Clint mm -hmm. Station said they went to their superiors about the horrible conditions. And so have you had Border Patrol agents come to you directly to tell you what they're enduring and how upsetting it is to them? Every day, all of us are unhappy about this situation. Understand that the Border Patrol role is to catch, process, and turn over. We're talking about aliens that have already been processed and are waiting for placement with other agencies, such as Health and Human Services at Clint or ICRO at, at, uh, for the adults and the family units. When we do not have enough resources throughout the other, our law enforcement partners, so that they can't take these people out of our custody, they tend to build up um, with us. It's like a police station that doesn't have a place to, to, um, to transfer people that it arrests. It, we we, have, we have, are not designed for this. We're designed for short-term holding, yet we continue to add more and more capabilities, more and more space, more and more contracts to deal with it when we cannot properly and, and promptly turn these children over as quickly as possible. Now, the good news is um, health and human services, additional funding, it's moving quicker. Currently this morning, we only have 26 children in custody. Mm -hmm. So things are improving, but again, it has been a continuous process of improvement. The Border Patrol has done and continues to do everything it can do to improve these conditions. That continues to come out in all of these reports. The OIG report yeah. of May 30th, Mr. Moak's uh, report. Uh Aaron Hall, we really appreciate you coming on New Day to answer our questions. And it is very good news, as you say, to hear that there are only 26 children in custody there now after hundreds uh, having been there last month. So, so thank you very much for being with us. Yes, ma'am.